All right, well today we're gonna to talk about weathering. And I like to think of it as nature's garbage disposal, taking big things and making them tiny. Before we get into weathering, I kinda of wanted to talk about what we're gonna to see today. Really, we're gonna be doing four things. One, we're gonna review plate tectonics and boundaries and volcanoes and rock cycle. We could spend some time on earthquake, but earthquakes really don't help us understand weathering. They're really cool and they're definitely a piece of the earth, but it doesn't really help really directly to weathering. So we're gonna pretend that we're gonna kind of skip over them. We're gonna identify the ways that the earth builds up new land and rock. But then we're also gonna identify the ways that the earth breaks down that land and rock. And we're gonna define this term weathering. It's a term we've used before, but I wanna make sure we can get it into some context. So let's start with plate tectonics. In class, I've always said this is the big item, right? This is really what this class is really about. And if I could rename the class instead of Earth Science, it really would be plate tectonics. Plate tectonics originally came about as this idea of continental drift by Alfred Lothar Wegener, right? This is the guy who looked at all the continents and he said, well, they all fit. If you cut them out and you put them back together, you get one continent, the supercontinent. And then later on, we call that Pangea. Well, when he originally put his idea out there, people thought he was crazy, right? Because think of how heavy and big the comets are. They're rock and they're huge and they're moving. There was no way to tell how they could possibly move. So scientists kind of just laughed at him and said he's a crazy guy and he kind of lived out in refuge. Well, it wasn't until the 60s that we really started to use convection. And probably was ironic they did the 60s, but lava lamps and all the groovy stuff, right? Convection is the idea that in liquids, when they're hot, they become less dense and they float up to the top. And when they get to the top, they cool down and they sink back to the bottom. And it's this big cycle, right? It's how a lava lamp works. It's how boiling water. It's also how your heater works in your house. If you have a two-story house, you always know the top is always much hotter than the bottom. Well, the mantle or mesosphere it's liquid and the outer core in the middle at the bottom is really hot. And so inside the mesosphere and the mantle, if you choose whichever term you want, the mantle is spinning. It's convection is happening and pieces of rock or liquid magma, magma, it is cycling around. That cycling at the top is pushing the lithosphere around. It's shoving it this way and that way, right? It's kind of like bobbing on the surface and getting shoved around. Right? Alfred didn't know that, and if he did, he would see he was right. All the continents were together at one time, and it was Pangea, and now they've all separated apart. At some point, they'll come back together and separate apart again, and it's this big cycle of plate tectonics. Right? And at some point, we saw that pl at plate tectonics, the lithosphere collide, and sometimes they pull apart, and sometimes they slide past each other, and we came up with this big table. Now, your table actually had a fourth one, we'll get to in a second. Right, where we talked about convergent boundaries, divergent boundaries, and transform. Right? A convergent boundaries when they collide. The plates are coming together and they smash into each other. We have some examples like the Himalayas and Appalachians. Two really different types, two very different places. The Himalayas are these giant peaks, this huge scar on the planet where India smashes into China. And the Appalachians, well, they're kind of a mountain range, but they're not mountains like Mount Hood rounded and smaller, kind of like folded up. But yet they're the same type of mountain. And we can talk about later on why the Himalayas and the Appalachians are both convergent mountains, but they look very different. We talked about divergent boundaries, places where the earth is being pulled apart, places where it's dividing. Right? And we looked at examples like the Mid-Ocean Ridge, this chain of volcanoes that goes all around the globe and the oceans and actually comes up and land in Iceland and pulls Iceland apart. It's growing. It's one of the reasons why Iceland has so many volcanoes. Or the Great Rift Valley, a piece of Africa that's being split apart and actually there's volcanoes and earthquakes happening there. The other type of boundary we talked about is transform and this is where the plates like slide past each other. Right? This isn't much, you're not getting new ground, you're not taking away ground. You're not getting new mountains, and really it looks just like a big crack in the ground, this giant line that goes where roads are being ripped into and things like that. Our example was the San Andreas Fault. Now, if you live in Oregon, those are great, but the real boundary you're more interested in is subduction. Right? 
in Oregon, this is where we live. We live on an active subduction zone. In fact, if you looked over to the ocean, instead of saying it'd say the Juan de Fuca plate and the continent would be the North American plate. And this is where we live. It's the top of convergent boundary where the oceanic plate is made up of really dense, heavy basalt and the continental plate is mostly in the bottom granite, much lighter. Well, it's rock, so it's kind of relative. Rock is still pretty heavy. Granite's really heavy, but not as quite as dense as basalt. So the ocean plate is colliding with the continental plate. The continental plate rides above it, and that oceanic plate gets shoved down into the mantle. Well, something happens in the mantle. It warms up. We saw that. There's convection. It's liquid and the basalt starts to melt. And just like in convection, hot liquids rise up. And so that melting basalt and melting oceanic floor melts and creates a chain of volcanoes, right? Um, in your diagram, you can see it says continental volcanic arc, but we could really easily erase that and say the Cascades. Those are mountains that you're familiar with. You live very close to active volcanoes, Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, Crater Lake, right? Newberry Crater. We could go through all the mountains in the Cascades and they all would count. But they're all formed because we live on a subduction zone. The subduction and these volcanoes are really important because volcanoes are really a way that the Earth is creating new. It's creating new rock. If it was on an island like Hawaii, you'd be creating new land. And we looked a little bit more closely at a volcano and you saw this posters on my room and we can look at the different events and types of flows that could come out of a composite volcano like Mount Hood. Magma is floating up through a conduit and it doesn't actually have flowing volcano. Remember we looked at the three types of volcanoes. You could have had a shield like Hawaii where it's nice and flowing. You could have a cinder cone which are these small nice cones like piles of popcorn or you can have a composite, this big explosive monster like Mount Hood. And you can see in this one, we've got ash coming up, we've got pyroclastic flows and lava domes and all sorts of cool stuff, right? The volcanic bombs like we looked in class. This is all creating new. It's violent, it's messy, but it's new, right? It's igneous rock, which really led us into the rock cycle. And that's, we did it really quick, but the rock cycle is where we're looking at the types of rock that we find on our planet. You can see right there at the top, very large, is igneous rock. In fact, most rock on our planet is igneous rock. And igneous rock was rock made in volcanoes, right? Could be granite, basalt, ash flows, tuff, right? We can rhyolite, andesites. We can go through lists and lists of them. But it's igneous rock, rock that's made in volcanoes. And we kind of charted it out. Remember, I had my nice cheesy rock story, a very cheesy movie idea. And we charted out how the rock cycle works. We had weathering and erosion that would take sediment, that would make sedimentary rock, that would become compacted with heat and pressure and form metamorphic rock, which then would get subducted where it melts and cool and form igneous rock, and the whole cycle goes again. Right? It was kind of like this idea of reduce, reuse, recycle. Right? We have um, Earth Day and we saw how we're supposed to be environmentally conscious and you create new stuff and if you create new stuff you kind of need to reuse it instead of just throwing away or reducing or recycling it and we find new uses. Reduce, reuse, recycle. So we've seen lots of ways so far that the earth is building up rock. We haven't seen much ways that is breaking it down and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's look at this really quickly. How are we building up rock? Well, the first place is divergent boundaries, right? These spots where the earth is being torn apart, being ripped ahead, right? Dividing, and we're getting new stuff inside of it, new magma, new lava, it's creating new land, new rock. We get volcanic islands like Hawaii, right? We saw how the shield volcano there, Kilauea, is spewing lava and it's reaching the ocean and the big island is getting bigger. Or even eventually the new island will pop up and you'll have a new island of land that's grown out or even Iceland that way. We have igneous rock. Mount Hood is made up of this rock that has been thrown out because of subduction. And then there's lots of more ways. You could probably think of some yourself. Lots of ways that the earth is building up. But the earth isn't getting any bigger. And if we kept building things up, it stands to reason that the earth would be growing. It's not. The earth is the size of the earth. 
So what's happening? How are we going to tear down rock? How are we going to get rid of it? Well, we talked somewhat about it, right? Convergent boundaries, well, they kind of don't break down rock. I left it up there um, because it does change rock, right? We take two rocks, we smash them together, we get probably metamorphic rock, but it changes it and probably makes it smaller, but it changes the rock. Subduction, well, that definitely breaks down rock, right? We're taking in ocean floor, we're pulling it under the earth where it's getting recycled and put back into new igneous rock. Absolutely. But what about just that igneous rock? Isn't there's got to be other processes that are breaking down? It, just the rock that's sitting around us it doesn't last forever. Well, the answer was right in front of you the whole time. Um, it's in the rock cycle. Again, if you look back, it's actually that first and second off of igneous rock. It says weathering and erosion and sediment. In fact, our next entire unit really is just going to be focusing on weathering erosion and sediment because that's where we're going in the last bit of our class. So weathering and erosion really is the answer to how we're going to break down rock. And so let's look at this term weathering. Uh, the definition I want you guys to use for weathering is the process of breaking down rock into smaller pieces. It's really simple, right? Let's see if we can break it down further, this definition. The process. Well, process is just a fancy way of saying an action, a verb, doing something. So it's doing something to break down rock into smaller pieces. We haven't got to what's doing it, but we're going to see. So if we weather a rock, well, all we're going to do is break it into smaller pieces. Right? We're going to grind it. We can, well, we'll come up with tons of ways what we can. Well, let's look at some examples. Really, an example could be any rock that isn't attached to a cliff or to a mountain or volcano. It could be anything. It could be a boulder, like you can see where we have these guys at Arches National Park, or it could be cobbles that you'd find on the Sandy River. It could be pebbles that you might find in your driveway or sand on the beach. It could even be silt that you'd find still in the Sandy River, but it's more considered sand. It could be clay. All of those things are examples of rock that's been weathered, that has been made smaller. If you look, pay attention, you can see that the smaller they get, the more round they get, and we're going to see that in class a little bit later. There's a term we use when we're talking about examples of rocks that have been weathered, and that term is sediment. It's been another one of your vocabulary words, but now you can see that all it is is rocks that are small, slowly being recycled. It's sediment. So, a poor little rock, right? It's sitting there as part of a volcano, and along comes weathering and acts like a garbage disposal and takes this big rock, like you see right there, nice piece of probably rhyolite or whatever it is, and breaks it down into tinier and tinier little bits. Well, that's exactly what your garbage disposal does. You have a chicken bone, you don't want to throw in the garbage, so you turn on the disposal and you shove it in and it breaks it down into little bits that can get flushed down the drain. Or, in my case, probably get stopped in the drain and I have to go and plunge it and it's a mess. But, it's taking rock and making it smaller. So here's your task for tomorrow when we come into class. I want you to be evil. I want you to come up with as many ways that you can to break up rocks, to make them and weather them, right? I want you to be evil and be, come up with fun ways, dipping them in acid and blowing them up and crushing them and taking ice and, well, you can come up with it yourself, right? So let's really quick look at what we did. One, we talked and reviewed plate tectonics and boundaries. We looked at volcanoes and rock cycle and saw how they all act to build up the earth, build land, build new rocks. We also looked that there are some ways that the earth also breaks down, like subduction, or in some ways convergent boundaries. But mostly the earth is breaking it down because of weathering. And we define this term of weathering as the process of breaking rocks from big rocks to little rocks. We still haven't figured out what's doing it, and we'll do that next, but it's that process. All right, well, you have a good day, and I will see you tomorrow.